guys. Questions? How's your shoulder feeling? It's good. Getting better every day. Getting better every day. Just got to keep working at it. Obviously, it's a, uh, a big game for a lot of different reasons, but for you personally, playing against the Green Bay Packers where you grew up as a man and as a, as a football player, it's got to have a little bit of special significance for you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously that's the part leading up to it, but then once the game starts, it's just like every other game. Um, I mean, it's not going to be a whole lot of emotion and all that other stuff tied up in it once, you know, the, the clock is ticking. So, you know, the the story and, and the, the specialness of the opportunity to play the team that you kind of, um, you know, grew up in that organization is, is special. But then, like I said, once once we get going, it's time to go. There's one way, I mean, obviously, there's, I'm sure, an appreciation level for what that city has meant to you, what that organization meant to you yeah. as a player and as a, as a human being. But is the best way to thank them for that by going out there and putting your best version out there and going out there to, to honor what they taught you and how you were you were brought up. Well, maybe not the fans. I don't think they would appreciate that. But uh, but yeah, the the organization. I mean, I'm not looking too deep into it as as it pertains to that stuff. It's more just um, you know enjoying the opportunity to see some of the old old faces. You know, in the training room, coaches, a couple of players. A lot much different team over the last uh, couple of years since I was there. So um, yeah, just it'll be a cool opportunity to see some of those guys and obviously play against a team that I've never played against. It's, the, it's my last team to, to play against, so uh, it'll be fun. The guy that you've talked about in the past that you kind of you know helped grow into the man he is in terms of a player, uh, Jair Alexander, can you just talk about you know how you've seen him grow just as a person and as a player and what's it going to be like to go against him? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the most... Um, one of the most locked in players as far as from from the from the jump that I've been a part, that I've um, got to play with. And I still remember I told a story about our first one on one in Green Bay and how I came back in the locker room and he was already on his iPad looking at the tape, trying to see exactly what it was. And he came up to me and asked me, you know, what was it that I had seen that led to me doing what I what I did on the route? So typically at that point, you know, in my career is people were just you know, if you have young guys come in, especially a rookie, they'll come in and then they'll get beat. And it's just kind of like, you know, we'll learn from it on tape, but it wasn't something that really got to him to their core, like how, how it was with him. So that's when I knew he was going to be a special player. And then um, not that I, not that I, well, I won't say not that I had nothing to do with it, but I didn't, I didn't create that monster, but he definitely turned into one. So it's always good to, to see, um, you know, a player, especially a highly touted player like that, get drafted in the first round and then, um, realize its potential and live up to it. So it's 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 fun to see and it's definitely going to be fun to play against. With those experiences and all, all the reps you took against each other, does this make it even more of a chess match than usual if you guys are matched up against each other Monday? Mm, no, I mean it'll be it'll definitely be different than any um, head to head or lack for lack of better words um, that I've had in the past. Um, but it'll be just like the other ones, and I'm the sense that we're not going to be lined up across from each other every play. He's not going to follow me probably every single place, and that's just by you know their defensive scheme. I move around a lot and different things like that, and it's just really not how the game is played uh, too much these days. You don't really see one guy just going wherever the guy is because it gives up a lot of tales of what the defense is doing and um, you know and just the the way that they scheme. So um, the the times that we'll have, you know, we'll we'll definitely go and compete, but you know it it, it won't be some. You know, we lined up each other 70 snaps across from each other the whole game, but it'll be fun either way. Would, would you say the way that ended there was more harmonious than maybe it seemed from the outside? Yeah, I mean, we we ended in a good place. Um, I still, not frequently, but I still speak to, you know, the front office guys over there. I checked in on Matt in the off season, hit him on his birthday. Um, all the coaches over there, I love the ones that are that are still there. So, um, you know, the players, obviously, they understood the situation as well. So it wasn't some big, crazy breakup that people thought it was. Obviously, there was um, it, it felt like it just because everything seemed good a week ago. And then, it, you know, obviously, I was gone. But uh, a lot of love and respect, mutual love and respect uh, between the, the, the Packers and I. You and Aaron have both come out publicly and talked about that first offer they made you before the 21 season. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously don't go back and, and play the what-if game, but if, if they had given you something that had pleased you then, would, would you still be there, maybe? Well, I would have played that next year there for sure. I mean, that was, that was what I said. It was obviously a lot of limbo with Aaron and his situation, deciding what his future was going to be like playing football, um, you know, let alone on that team. So... Uh, it wasn't really a risk that I could take at the time, and it was a decision that had to be made. But had they made that uh, the, the correct offer or 
submitted something like they did right before I left, then I would have 100% been there for another year, and then we would obviously see what happened as it as it moved forward. But um, at least for that upcoming season, I would say yes, I would have been there. There are only 18 guys on that 53 that you played with. Like you said, there's no lot of turnover. Mm -hmm. um, does that make it easier to take kind of the, I don't want to say nostalgia out of this, but the team is so different? Is it just almost another team, or is there still some connection there? I mean, it's still still connection because it's not really about the, the players. I'm not bonding with the guys while I'm out there. It's more about the organization and, um, you know, the, the uniform, seeing that because I won't – I mean, I don't know how many more times in my career, and it definitely hasn't happened to this point where I'll be able to line up across from somebody with, with the green and gold on. You know, that'll be – that'll take some adjusting, um, getting used to that. But uh, for the most part, it'll – you know, it'll, it'll be just another game. Has some flashes this season, but hasn't been able to find consistency. What do you think the disconnect has been, just in terms of replicating that over and over? It's just getting a call and executing it every time. It's just a matter of you know just being being one with uh, being one out there on the field and, and having all eleven connected to, to be one. And we haven't had that. It's always been you know ten guys do it right and then one guy does it wrong or nine or whatever. Everything but eleven uh, consistently, and that's where you make. Um, you know, very difficult. It's difficult to make. Hey, you know, especially the way we play the game, and we gotta, we just gotta be more together, and people gotta own up and, and find a way to to get their assignment taken care of. And and once we do that, we'll be able to make more consistent plays. In your experience, is that something that, that clicks at some point, or is it like, is there a turning point? In, in I mean, it can click, yeah, and you can use that as something that where you use the the rhythm and find a, a way to consistently keep that going, and then. It can be a time where you figure it out and then you go on a dry spill. So you just have to, it's always a work in progress. It's never something that you just figure out and then, you know, you, you got it taken care of. It's something that you got to work at and continue to work at to, to be in a place where you, you feel comfortable as a team. What makes Aaron Jones such a special player and what can you tell the defense about his style of play from being with him in that locker room for so many years? Yeah, he's just a, such a unique runner, very explosive player and, I never seen anybody like him as far as just how vertical he plays. He, it's not a lot of breaking down, and I think that's a pretty unconventional way of playing that position because, I mean, people are coming out of everywhere. You're running through the smoke. You can easily get hit, especially with the, you know, he's not A.J. Dillon size. So um, going through the hole, I think it's just people aren't ready for it. It's, it's like I said, it's just so downhill and so vertical. He doesn't really give people time to, to get a plan together. You just kind of get up on them and, very slippery player and, and really good vision. And when you put those three together, it's, uh, it creates a, a pretty big problem. You guys all good? All right. Cool. Cool.